Good morning. Welcome to Morning Express. So you're watching Indian Express. I'm Charula Tapaswas. Let's begin with the big story of the day. Russia has claimed that Indian students in Kharkiv had been taken hostage by Ukrainian security forces who were using them as a human shield to prevent them from leaving for Russian territory, according to a readout of a phone conversation between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Russian President Vladimir Putin. It also added that the Russian military is trying to ensure that the safe removal of Indian citizens from the war zone is done. Amid the invasion, the Indian embassy has been issuing evacuation warnings to all its citizens trapped in cities across the war-torn country. Lieutenant General Huda, who retired as the Northern Army Commander in 2016, explains the safest way to travel in combat zones. His key advice is to stay in groups, carry less and identify yourself as a civilian. Restrictions on use of airspace by the West on Russia and vice versa is expected to impact travellers from India to the US. American carrier United Airlines, which was using Russian airspace to fly to India and back, has temporarily suspended some of its flights on the India-US route. Here are the stories you'll find only in Indian Express. Asserting that India wants peace, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh in an interview with the Indian Express said, We shouldn't see India's dealings with Russia in the backdrop of this confrontation. Whatever is happening should stop. Let's have a look at the front page. The war in Ukraine has focused attention on the plight of Indian medical students there and the growing presence abroad. Records show a threefold increase over the last five years in the number of candidates taking the mandatory test for all Indian students going abroad to obtain a license to practice medicine in India. As Uttar Pradesh goes to polls today, the legacy of Mandal politics, Samajwadi Party, hopes for backward caste consolidation, but it cannot say it out loud. BJP's current narrative dominance have ensured that the politics of caste is projected as divisive, while a Hindutva which explicitly and openly excludes Muslims is portrayed as non-discriminatory. Trade and industry bodies as well as some tech companies from the US have initiated talks with senior government officials in India to form a new working group to discuss issues related to the Data Protection Bill, such as insistence on local storage of data and restrictions on cross-border flow of data. Here are the must-reads. Carved out from Faizabad in 1995 when Mayawati was the chief minister, Uttar Pradesh Ambedkar Nagar district with around 20% of the voters Dalit is considered a BSP stronghold. The Ambedkar Nagar Lok Sabha seat has been represented by the BSP Supremo six times. In an election where the BSP is seen uh, as a non-presence, literally Ambedkar Nagar might be an exception. I worked for 12 years in the Gulf and later shifted to Mysore, where my children were studying well. But by the time I started dreaming of seeing my son as a doctor, the dream vanished like the wind," said the heartbroken Shekharappa Gyana Gowder. His son Naveen, a medical student in Kharki, was killed in shelling on Tuesday. In the village of Chalagiri in Karnataka, ripples of the tragedy are being felt beyond the walls of Naveen's home. Shekharappa was not the only one of its 12,000 residents awaiting the return of a family member stuck in Ukraine. Exactly 14 years ago, Virat Kohli, a stump in his hand, had slid on the green grass in Kuala Lumpur Stadium after leading India to the Under-19 World Cup, beating South Africa in the final on March 2, 2008. His Under-19 teammates have not let him forget the moment. Their WhatsApp group named Under-19 Champions was flooded with a deluge of emojis on Wednesday as he is set to play his 100th test against Sri Lanka later this week. This group never has a dull moment, its members tell the Indian Express. And in today's Delhi Confidential, under fire over the issue of students stranded in Ukraine, the government has asked ministers to receive those returning in the flights under Operation Ganga mission. From Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani to Jai Shakti uh, Minister, Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Shikhawat, ministers were seen interacting with evacuees just as they arrived in India. And finally, in today's episode of the Three Things Podcast, we discuss the evacuation challenges ahead of India in Ukraine, the highlights of the latest IPCC report, and Bharat Pay's action against Ashneer Grover. That's a news wrap from my end. For the latest updates, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Indian Express. Thank you for watching.